This has got to be emotional for him. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been granted exclusive access to one of the hottest rising stars in British wrestling, one of the stars of PCW, Mr. Rossi Rascal. Ross, thank you for talking to me today. It's a pretty amazing place yeah, you've got here. This you, is your. You. This is where you, you began and your career in judo, I take it. Well, that's it. Obviously, the camera won't do it justice. We can't actually see the whole building, but uh, we'll take some pictures later to get some more footage. But this is it. This is the judo club where I started over a decade ago and this is where everything takes place, the hard work, the training, the game planning, it all comes down to here. So this, the work you did here over many years was your then launch pad into professional wrestling. Totally. It's PCW. Yeah, I yeah, know, totally. Um, so, you know, when did you start watching wrestling? Give us a, an idea of when you fell in love with the business. I was a lot like kids at my school and that were watching the Attitude Era and stuff, but I didn't really take to it then, so I was kind of, but it was more the 2002, they call it Ruthless Aggression, yeah. of course, that's the buzzword for that. And I was taken to people like Lesnar when Lesnar burst onto the scene, we knew Mysterio, you know, as a kid witnessing that. So it was more that era, 2002. So I kind of missed out on all the Attitude stuff, that's why I don't miss it. And it's the 2002, you know, the John Cena's, the Randy Orton, everybody was just like larger than life. So it was inspiring to, to, to look like that, to be like that. I, I believe that was roughly the time I started getting into it anyway. So. And so many years later, you yeah. then um, discovered PCW, saw they had the white collar program where uh, normal everyday people can learn the basics of wrestling. And at the end of that eight week training period, they have a match against a professional in a charity show. Tell us about your experience on that. Yeah, no, there was oh, I had an opportunity. An opportunity for anybody just to either live a dream or get that launching pad. Uh, my, mine wasn't the, to get a launching pad. Mine was to be one and done. So I just wanted to fulfill like a childhood dream and just enjoy it from there. So I did the eight weeks. I wrestled a good match on the white collar thing where I genuinely enjoyed it. It was my WrestleMania moment, if you will, larger than life. And then I rolled off into the sunset and carried on with my judo, carried on, you know, competing in judo, competing in boxing or all sorts of different things. And, that was pretty much it, just fizzled, and then you miss it, and then, you know, a lot of people saying you've got potential here, or you did really well, um, you know, people like, you know, Danny Hope and Ashton and stuff like that, so it's, I'm going to give it one more go, and the plan was again just to do it one more time, just to fulfil that moment again, if you will, and I did it, and again, the potential started growing, I thought, great, I finished, Greg invited me back and said, we're going to chuck you in the rumble. I thought, wow, it's technically a number one contendership match for your first ever match. I thought, yeah, we'll do the, the Rumble. And you know the rest from there, of course. Yeah, I said, definitely, I, let's go for it. I was, I was there that night in, in, yeah. watching as <laughs> well a fan. Night, yes. um, and so, yeah, the, obviously I, the night before, White Collar, um, I was there as a fan watching it because I'm, I'm not a wrestler. Um, but I was there to enjoy the show and people love Rossi Rascal. The next night, that same music hits. Yeah. Rossi Rascal comes out, the crowd go crazy. Tell us about what it was like stepping into that ring for that first time and who was there. That was you. that was different. White collar was different. Um, you know, white collar was obviously fun. And that the second I stepped into that ring, I was in the ring with Tel Bannon, I was in the ring with Rene Dupree, Danny Hope, um, Matt Brooks. So it was like <laughs> I was like, you know, you know, uh, what do you call it? A gazelle amongst lions. I yeah. strolled in there, you know, full of hype, full of life. You full walked in and went, oh wow, okay, what is this? So I just thought, to hell with this, I'm just going to clean house the best I can. So I started the unleashing. And in my head, that was going to be my last ever appearance. I thought, thank you for the opportunity. So I just thought, how can I you know, make this special for me? So I ran straight up to Rene Dupree and I judo for him. I thought, what a story to tell to the club. What a story to tell to the team. And I think the cool thing with that was I earned his respect from that. Because I just genuinely ran up. You to just him. went up to the yeah. biggest guy in the ring, <laughs> yeah. WWE megastar, and you yeah. threw him. And I yeah. thought, well, yeah, why not? Why not? And that, the rest is history. And um, mm. I enjoyed it. Had a blast. And it's quite fitting that the man that eliminated me from that rumble, if you remember who that was, I, yeah, I do remember is that. Yeah, the man I'm taking on, you know, again in uh, Blackpool. Very yeah. Soon. Well, I'll get onto that shortly. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> It comes full circle. It, it, that was it, nearly a year ago it, now. Yeah, it all comes back, doesn't it? So what wasn't um, a one and done then became an entry into the Rumble, which then became something else. Yeah. A few weeks later, um, you were put in a match against uh, an Olympic wrestler, yeah, yeah. Joe Hendry, the prestigious one, Joe Hendry. Um, what was that like? 
fighting Joe. It was great, you know, Commonwealth champion and all that, and uh, in freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman wrestling, uh, big guy, very experienced in professional wrestling. I love challenges, uh, even in like judo, I'd, I'd always go for the biggest and, and the one that made a name for himself. Um, if I could, I'd always try and jump that line and yeah. just go for the, the biggest and the baddest. So the, the way they called me up, of course, was you're a local, it was in Blackpool again, so yeah. they said you're the local guy, we're just going to basically feed you to Joe Hendry, of course. Yeah. That's it, Joe Hendry has a thing going on, he, you know, he has to establish himself around here, so we're just going to feed you a local hero. And fortunately for me, I held my own. Yeah. Um, I don't think he was expecting to put up as <laughs> yeah. much of it. I think he was expecting to go in and have a quick two minute match. Yeah. But you showed him some moves, didn't you? And yeah, totally. rattled him. Yeah, exactly. I think my style's so unique, and I think that's what's getting me to this stage so quickly is it's a completely new style. It's different. It's a blend of good body mechanics from your judo, from your fighting as well. I've been, you know, in cages and rings and stuff like yeah. that as well. So it's kind of more natural instinct type stuff which throw out judo from you know once yeah. in a while sometimes <laughs> sorry pal and then you know carry on from there so the joe hendry thing i think really really launched me to that okay this kid's gonna stick around or yeah. this kid's got something if you will yeah. um it's just keeping my feet on the ground and seeing what comes next that was a huge huge day for me and and, and obviously after that the local you are the local star in blackpool making a name for yourself against a man who is a the local hero yeah um you held your own um, you didn't get the win on that occasion no, no. but the fans really connected with you and there was huge chance for rossi rascal so much so that those chants started to then take over other shows. <laughs> um, I know. I remember working on many academy shows where there was a small but very loyal <laughs> Ross fan base that started to get bigger with every show and louder they with every show. It was surreal because one of my biggest fears was just not getting a reaction at all. I, I didn't even care if I got booed sometimes, but I'd turn up to like arenas sometimes and be like, no one's going to care. You know, it was kind of like a generic, you know, tights, you know, just, a, you know, a guy that's in half decent shape. And I wanted to try and mould that, you know, that persona a bit better. So the fact that they talked to me, I think cause it was more genuine, you know, it was a legit judo background, which they haven't really seen in wrestling. Applied with that. I genuinely want to be here, I genuinely want to do well, and I also want to help others along the way. Yeah. So my position in the, it's only a year, because I'm still a rookie, I've still got yeah. a lot to learn, but my position now, I want to help other trainees get to, to the main roster and things. So I want to always give back, even though I'm still on my own journey. Yeah. And I think they appreciate that. The fans, the PCW fans are dead rare, where they just appreciate effort. Even if I did something that didn't go well, they'd still appreciate and clap the yeah. effort. And, I always appreciated that. So my aim was always just to give back a little bit more. And that's what carried on and then it started blowing up a bit where, okay, you know, let's get behind this guy, you know, yeah. he's, he's a genuine guy, I guess. Yeah. Um, so even now, the, the, the response when your music kicks in yeah. is huge, the crowd love you, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, over sort of the, the last sort of six months, you you know, you've had a, a string of victories against lots of incredible opponents. Um, many established names within the business, like Sam Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was it like? That was, time when you fought Sam. That was a big day. That was that was a day where things just started to click. Like I've always said to you, you know, I'm laughing backstage. You know, I'm just trying to keep my head above water because I am. I think the judo's helped me so much that you know I'm in these positions where I'm either co-main or I'm fighting, you know, a, an established star where I'm just like this is overwhelming as hell. But I'm going to go in with a focus and I'm going to be always trying my best, but. With Sam Bailey and just, you know, working that, I've just felt like I've leveled up. You know, like in a video game, you level up. Yeah. Again, I'm still all the way down here. You've got last bosses and everything, but I felt like something really clicked that day and I felt like it started to make sense. I'm starting to understand my persona, my movements, the stuff that I can do in the ring and how I can, again, connect to that audience a bit more. And that was the big day for me. Again, it was in Blackpool. Blackpool's always a big show for me. It's like my WrestleMania. And from then on, it, it just gave me that confidence. But that right confidence, again, to keep my feet on the ground, yeah. stay humble, uh, and just keep 
in Bruden, if you like. So yeah. Big day. That, that, big day. I enjoyed that. That was a good fun, that. Um, you talk about um, liking to go for the biggest opponent that you can yeah. find. <laughs> yes, whenever you can. Well, That's how you learn. Yes, yeah, exactly. You learn. And within PCW, within wrestling in general, there aren't many bigger opponents than the six... Sorry. Six se- foot, yeah. I was describing as six foot four. I said six foot when I did the radio. Uh, they said, can you describe yeah. Big T? And I said, yeah, sure, he's six foot tall, 150 <laughs> kilo. <laughs> I got that way wrong. Everyone's like, is that it? Yeah, legitimate seven foot yeah. giant of a man who could crush you just by looking at you. But you decided you wanted to fight him. Yeah, and yeah. you've had several matches with him over the last few months, almost like a running feud where yes. you keep trying to get him back into the and you get closer and closer to, to pinning him. He's never been beat. He's never been pinned uh, or submitted yeah, yeah, yeah. in a PCW ring. But recently in Blackpool, you came to within a split second of pinning him for the first time, and you then, unfortunately, didn't quite make it. What was that like that that night? Um, I don't know if it picked up on camera, but I cried at the end of that match. Um, I don't know why I was crying. It wasn't. I think it was just that the emotion was so in a good way, though. It was yeah. a good. It was a good cry. Yeah. The emotion was great. Uh, I felt like again, like uh, you know, losing one of the biggest matches in your life. Like literally everything I did in my life came down to that moment. Mm-hmm. And toppling, you know, what would it have done for me and the things that I want to do if I could be the first guy? And to to, to fail, fail is the right word because it's okay to fail. It's part of success. And to do that again, but the cool thing was at the end of that, everybody still appreciated my yeah. efforts. They still clapped. They still cheered. It helps me back to my feet. I cried because it was emotional. It's it's one of the most physical, most difficult physical things I've ever done. Mentally and emotional, very difficult to prepare mm-hmm. for a man like Big T. Uh, when you know what he's capable of, and when you know there's no formula to beat him. If you yeah. know. Uh, the first time we fought at Evoke, uh, it still came close, but that was that was just sussing him out. And then the second time in Blackpool, I kind of went in. Maybe I went in too over arrogant. I don't know. But I was thinking, my judo and my speed, that's what I was relying yeah. on. I could just outspeed him. Yeah. But you can't. He's still fast for a big guy. Yeah. He's genuinely, in my opinion, the hardest working British wrestler. You know what I mean? The hardest working wrestler in the country, mm-hmm. without a doubt, despite our differences. So I, I kind of maybe got a bit too arrogant. It's in my hometown. I've got the support. Yeah. I know I can do this. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blackpool Tower Circus, a Blackpool hero in Rossi Rascal. A huge amount of local press has been gathered here about this matchup tonight. Rascal has been appearing on BBC Radio Lancashire in multiple, multiple instances. Listen to that, the fans have brought air horns to Harold the announcement of their hero. Uh, he's been in there against Big T just, just before. I'll tell you what, he did seem to do incredibly well against the, the seven-footer. There was, a, there was a moment within that matchup that I felt we could have been watching something very spectacular about oh. to happen. Into an inverted suplex! Frosty Rascal, where's this going from? A oh. kick out! Rascal is still in this match! It down at the last second. And you've got to think as well, an impact coming at the last second when you... That is... That is cruel. As someone comes out to support someone that they respect and look up to, they shouldn't have to be subject to that. Stand in the corner face They've the wall. They've come out to support the person that they see as a teacher, a figure to respect, someone that they were... And oh. judo throw! Modified judo throw set to his feet again, again. Well, oh, oh. on that time, the leg caught him, didn't it? Just so again, in a good, it's you win or learn, and it, I learned and I stayed humble. But I do genuinely believe I have the formula now. I do believe I know what was missing to to, to actually get yeah. this guy. I do, and it's going to sound cliche, it's going to sound goofy, but it's going to be on heart. You know, you just got to have heart. Yeah to keep pushing, to keep going. As I said, this is the most difficult thing I've done mentally, emotionally, physically. But you just gotta go. Cliche again, it's made me stronger, it's made me better, I've learned a lot from it, but 
I want one more. I want one more yeah. crack at the whip. And I knew I didn't deserve it after I lost. So I was happy to, to go back to the bottom of the drawing board. But I couldn't get over that obsession mm -hmm. with wanting to try one more time. Because after that match, you, you got on the microphone and said, yeah. Big T, let's try this again. And Yeah, I was up for it right there, right now. You know, you get in the moment. Yeah. I was like, let's do it, let's do it. I and think the fans wanted it. But... The fans wanted it, but obviously Big T said, no, no chance. Rightfully so, rightfully so. Do you think he's actually worried? Do you think he is thinking that you came closer than anyone else and that you could be the person to defeat him? I think he's only worried because of the desire that I have to do it. I think in terms of accolades and attributes and that, I don't think anything phases him. But in terms of me having that desire to actually be the first guy, I think that's what does unsettle him. Yeah. He's like, this this kid's actually got a burning desire. He can't think about anything else. He can't enjoy his Christmas. He's thinking and, and training. And as I said, he's one of the hardest working wrestlers I know. I, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes with me. I don't post all my training on Instagram or on social media. I'm here training. I don't have time I'm training that much. And I'm trying to learn as we go along. But as I said, I genuinely believe it's heart that will beat this guy. And I, again, I believe mine's unmatched. So. Since then, you've spent several months chasing him, yeah. trying to sort of track him down at shows to get that that match booked on that show, and for yeah. whatever reason, that hasn't happened. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by Rossi Rascal. Now, Ross, you recently had an incredible match against Big T Justice and you came within inches of being the first person to make him submit or to beat him by a pin. But you didn't quite do it. And Big T has said he doesn't want to give you a rematch. So what are your plans going forward? I make no excuses. As I said, he beat me fair and square, but I don't celebrate silver, I don't celebrate second place. I'm going to go for the entire roster like a samurai sword through butter until I earn that rematch, until I earn that shot again. I'm going to keep wanting Big T. Thank you. Thank you. Look at this, making his way to the ring in not quite his usual jovial fashion. You will, of course, remember, ladies and gentlemen, the last time we saw Rossi Rascal at the Blackpool Tower Circus, he took on Big T Justice, buyout member Big T Justice, in what was an absolutely thrilling contest. Where but who won? Who won? I'll get to that, where Rossi Rascal almost took the big man to his limits. But Big T Justice's streak here on PCW television is still intact. But look at this! Price not intimidated at all. Price getting into the face of the Rascal. Not, not a wise potential decision That's at it. this moment. Uh, he's rubbed it in! You lost to Big T! A loser! Oh, 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 oh. Into the cover! No! That's it! That's it! Look at this! Big T stands tall! So just another example of what happens when you stick your nose in the buyout's business. Wait. Look at this! Wait a second! Big T puts away! It's Rossi Rascal! What's he doing here? He's not in this match. Not in this match, but he clearly, look who he's after. Big T Justice, the man he has wanted. Look at that, throwing Big T Justice. Rossi Rascal making a statement here, saving the champion once again. He's just made the biggest mistake of his professional wrestling career. Absolute chaos, bodies are spilling from the locker room. Big T Justice clearing the ring. Nothing stands in his way except for oh, Rossi no. Rascal! Get out of here! Get out! You've got no business being Standing here! Standing against the giant! Judo yeah. through! Oh. No! Shake El Sham, PCW TV. 
Rossi has to win or he doesn't get that rematch with Big T. Yet again, you've shown your favouritism. He doesn't deserve a match with Big T. Big T has beaten him twice. Count it, twice. Double nip up. How about that? These two men mirroring each other. Well, hardly mirroring. I mean, the shake is to... He's the prince of panache. He's an accomplished athlete. He's beaten many folks. Rossi Rascal. I mean, who is this? Jump, jump. Keeping an eye on proceedings. He's already got physically involved. Looking in now for oh, the Scorpion Deathlock. Beautifully executed. Look at the way. He's cranking back on the knees. The pressure on the lower back and on the knees. The hamstrings. Judo throw! He got him! He's got him! We saw him beat Mark Alexander Price with that! Oh, wait a oh, second. Dez oh. has dived out the ring. And look at him, he's getting distracted. Here comes oh. the shake. Oh, he, wait a second, the shake throwing. Big T is big enough to take Shakespeare. it. Shakespeare! Hey, oh wait, look at this, the shake's got up on the ring apron. And, well, no, hang on, the big T's on the ring apron while the shake's got Rossi pinned. What's going on? I told you, I told you there's problems here, Stallion. Big T not happy about what the shake did. No, see, Rascal gets his match with Big T Justice. said he was on a mission. Mission accomplished. Rossi Rascal versus Big T Justice. Blackpool Tower, road to glory. One more time. But recently, um, Greg Lambert has announced that you will be facing Big T. It's happening, it's happening. In a few short weeks, yeah, yeah. Um, in Blackpool, Friday the 13th. Yeah, I've noticed that. Everyone's saying that to me, and I totally neglected that was a thing. Is that so unlucky that... for you, or is that unlucky for him? I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> it's a fight, isn't it? It's a fight at the end of the day. It's in Blackpool. I love it. But yeah, a lot of people are saying, no, it's Friday the 13th and all this, but it's, it's that's nothing. Okay, that's so nothing. Um, the question I want, I'd love to know, and I think a lot of other people would know, is if you don't win on this occasion, then what? Is that going to be it? Are you going to draw a line under the Big T mission or are you going to keep going and going and going until you, you do beat him? It's one of them where, like, as a fighter, it's our professional wrestling is different to my like, fight career. For a fight career was always, oh, that's, get that out of your mind straight away, shake your head, you know, physically shake your head, get it out of your, you know, your mind. This is different. It's, it's, it's so different. And I'm not going to lie, there are doubts. Uh, every athlete, you know, you can be honest. Yeah. If any athlete says there's no doubts or no nerves, they're lying. Yeah. Uh, there are doubts, there are nerves, but again, that's what keeps me working harder. So if I didn't believe, you know, there was a doubt, again, pretty much like last time, yeah. I'd probably, you know, take my foot off the gas maybe. I think maybe even like last time, I was way too much media as well. We did everything, you know. <laughs> you know radio. Exactly, we did newspapers. everything. Newspapers, radio, which is great and it's flattering and it's really cool to to get word out there for, to showcase us, but it might have been just, I'm just looking back now. distracting you in a, in a way or I don't know. too confident? It wasn't always looking for an excuse, it was looking for an explanation to move forward. Yeah. So with me, it wasn't, let's make an excuse like I was injured or, at the end of the day, me and Big T, the same, we have the same 24 hours in a day. We've got the date, we know exactly when it is, we both show up, so there's no excuse. But I was just looking for an explanation as to, okay, what went wrong, if anything, how do I rectify that and how do I come back and, and win this? Yeah. Yeah, I've not thought about if, if I lose. I, I really haven't. But to, to give you a better answer, I genuinely, if I lose, I guess I've got to go to the bottom again and work my way up. I don't deserve a rematch ever again, you know what I mean? But I'm not thinking about that. Again, physically shake my head. It's not going to happen. I'm, I've got this. You know, yeah. I've got that heart. I've got, I've got everything I need, I think. So. Okay. Um, you've always had sort of a, an interesting entrance where your yeah. friends somehow involved. You're allowed to say what you've got planned, or you want to keep that under wraps for? I want to keep it under wraps. Okay. Um, so last time Blackpool, to me, as I said, is my WrestleMania. So now that I know I get we get good reactions and we get a good atmosphere in Blackpool, I want to try and do something special for myself and for for the people that I've chosen to support myself. Yeah. 
Last time we had the, the judo kids make the grand entrance, I came out in my judo suit for the first time. I thought I was really fitting. Yeah. I didn't really take in the moment as much as I should have. It, it felt a bit rushed. Yeah. But that's fine. I obviously had a seven foot tall giant staring yeah, at me yeah. in the ring, so that was fine. But this time I've got something grand planned, of course, which will be really, really cool for me. I've also got some new ring gear as well, which I'm not even going to reveal, but I'm excited to showcase that. Because I think it shows a cool side to me as well and how I can move forward just from ring gear as well. Yeah. Uh, and then I've always got some, so that's going to be my aim now is to do something special each and every Blackpool Tower show. Yeah. Not necessarily every Blackpool show, but Blackpool Tower to me is quite significant. Yeah. Uh, that venue, as I said, that's my WrestleMania, yeah. that's my Madison Square Garden. So I'm not going to tell you, I'm afraid. I'm not, okay, not going to keep right. that secret, but it is. I tried. Believe me, uh, tell everybody to get a ticket because it is going to be awesome. That alone is going to is going to blow people's minds and. I like that I'm I'm taking risks with this and PCW, you know, uh, suits and ties are allowing me to take these risks. Uh, big risk, big reward. And if it fails, then it's all on me. So. Okay, so we'll where do you see Rossi Rascal in the next few years in PCW? Crazy question. Crazy, crazy, crazy question. Um, my goal, when I first started setting goals in PCW, uh, my goal still in terms of timeline, when I first set them, I should be on the main roster now. My plan was to debut on an academy show, December just gone. Right. I debuted uh, before my white collar show in like February. <laughs> so I was already like eight months, I can't do the maths. <laughs> eight, nine months ahead. Yeah. So I was like, wow, but that's down to one, the opportunities PCW give you are yeah. unmatched for any age, ability as well. Literally everything, age, yeah. gender, ability. Um, they cater for everybody. Yeah. Shapes and sizes as well. As I said, professional wrestling used to be larger than life. There's something for everybody now. So moving forward with that, as I said, my goals that I set, thanks again, like I said, PCW opportunities, but I'm also confident in how hard I work. I work hard, I work smart, and sometimes tirelessly as well. Yeah. I also help promote myself as well. You know, the radio stuff, you know, everything I do for the judo, I don't do it selfishly as well. I do it for kids, I do it for people, you know, to give them confidence. Well, a few goals I threw out there, I said that was one of them. My goal was to debut on the main roster of April of this year. <laughs> we did it April last yeah, year. Yeah, did it a year So before. I was 12 months ahead of that one, which was crazy. Uh, other little goals to main event a show uh, on the main roster. Fortunately, we've ticked two of them boxes yeah. now, and we've done the last two. Um, I've got mini goals as well that are really cool, but not as vital. Mm -hmm. Uh, a cool goal of mine would be to main event Blackpool Tower. Yeah. I've main evented Blackpool, but not Blackpool Tower. That would be a cool, cool yeah. affair. Uh, mini goals. Any, any gold that you're after? Any championship Oh, belts? yeah. That, I was going to leave that till last. I'm not going to lie. I want that belt. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Greg about it. I said to him, I know it's a marathon, not a sprint. I said, I don't care if it takes, you know, two weeks, two years, two decades. I want that gold belt. I've lost sleep over that gold belt. You know, it's crazy how motivated I am when I train now because I've got that thought and what that could bring but also I need to respect that I'm still a rookie yeah I need to respect that the people that have held that belt you know who are we talking Ashton Smith yeah. you know Easton Reese yeah are at that caliber of course so I don't want to disrespect that but I do genuinely want that gold belt there's nothing else and all you need is the opportunity don't you if you have a, yeah, have yeah. a match with Joey Hayes. That's it. Who knows what can happen? Exactly. I, I think Joey. You know, Joey again. Another little bucket list of mine. Wrestle yeah. Joey. Wrestle. You know, he's wrestle CJ Banks. That's a bucket list of mine. No, he's out there somewhere. Danny Hope. You yeah. know, I've, I've never wrestled these guys, but I'm very happy that what we've done in such a short time is 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 kind of unmatched. I think this is crazy how it's happened. So all these goals that I ticked off had like a two three year lifespan. They've already been ticked off to where it's literally I want to be the first guy to beat Big T. Yeah. I want to, you know, main event Blackpool. I want to keep it, again, little goals that aren't measurable. I want to keep giving back to the fans. I want fans to have the opportunity just to enjoy themselves, to switch off. Little things like that, motivate, inspire, build confidence. All these little things that we can do. And if I can use my place in the company and my persona to help motivate people and get inspired, that's what we want to do. Use that as a tool. We're in a great position to do so. So there's lots of goals there, but I want that belt. <laughs> I want that belt. I do want that belt. I've, I've been fortunate to have quite a bit of gold in my life, which I'm giving away at the minute, by the yes. way. I, you know, it's that with you know with the medals and yes, stuff. Yes, yeah. But like I said, I want to bring that gold belt back to this building, and I want to, I want to get all the kids in the community, like make a big thing out of it, and get all the kids in the building yeah. and say, look what you can do. 
uh, again, cliche stuff is, but if you genuinely have that vision, look what you can do. So I genuinely see it every night, you know, me holding that belt underneath that sign with all the kids surrounding mm -hmm. it, of course, and saying, kids, you need to Yeah. Uh, funny story as well, actually. I was speaking to Joey a few weeks ago, and I think Joey did a photo shoot. You know when they do the in-ring photos with yes. the belts? Yeah. And I'm dead superstitious, so when I see belts lying around and stuff, I don't touch them or pick them up or anything yeah. until it's mine. But I was doing a photo shoot where I was a fan, and I kind of wrestled a few times, you know, on the white collar, so Joey knew yeah. vaguely who I was. And he says, uh, put this belt on, we'll get a picture. I said, yeah, cool, wow. Joey hates <laughs> And he just looked me dead in the eye and said, uh, that belt, do you want it? And I was kind of like, I was just, I, I kept Are you quiet. sure? I, yeah, I just kind of, yeah, you know, just nodding my head and smiled. But I'm thinking, Joey, you have no idea how much I want that gold belt and what I'm willing to do to get that damn gold belt. So that was a cool moment for me. And I told him that exact story. I said to him that that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. <laughs> but I just couldn't get the words out. But Joey's so cool. He's He's... He's our champion, you know, yeah. rightfully so. He is he is the champ. He is again one of the best wrestlers in the country. Yeah. Without that. And to just chat with him or just to talk with him and have banter with him is is, is crazy. Mm. I've learned a lot from watching him and I've learned a lot from speaking to him. As others from them. Yeah. Well that's a nice little story that way. <laughs> I do want that guy's belt. <laughs> well, one day you may get you know as you mentioned, inspiring kids. Yes. Uh, Big thing. your your students here in your in your judo club. How long do you think it'll be till one of those kids follows you nah. into the business and perhaps challenges you? <laughs> if ever you won the belt, how, how would that make you feel if one of those kids stepped up to, or, or several kids stepped up to follow you into the business and, and challenge you one day? Whatever they want to do, uh, we, have, we have a rule here at the Judo Club is honestly anything that you want. We're not spoiled, we're not entitled. If you put the work in, you'll get anything that you want. You want to be a wrestler, you, you'll be a wrestler because we're surrounding ourselves with good, positive people. If you want to be a champion, if you want to challenge me in a main event, that would be so cool. We have, in judo, we have no egos here. There's no egos in judo. So if a student steps up and say, threw me or beat me in a judo match, what does that say about my coaching? Mm. It says that I must be a good coach because now my student has beaten say, black. Yeah. So that's what, there's no ego there. So if they stepped up and they beat me in wrestling for a wrestling title, that says, what does that say about my coaching? Yeah. I'll be very proud. Uh, we've also got, as well as you know, um, a student of mine on the White Collar Programme as well. Yes, we do. She's kicking butt at the minute, absolutely kicking butt. So we're not going to reveal too much there, of course, but there's some good things to come down that path as well. So, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be absolutely epic. So much more cool stuff to go. And then the judo, I said that judo is giving back. Wrestling is me giving back. So going back to the whole medal thing as well, that's just an easy way for me to give back. Um, because as I said, I need to get better at wrestling to give back in a match capacity. So I just give back anywhere. Yeah. Brilliant. Which is cool. Thank you very much. What's your thank you, thank you. Thank you. Awesome.